So one of the unique features that I really enjoy about Horizon Zero Dawn in terms of the different player characters is this idea that it's a hybrid game. It's part deck builder, it's part hand management, and it's part upgrading gear and cards so that the upgrades and abilities that you have in your deck that you can possibly play every turn, you can utilize them in a somewhat reliable manner. Now, of course, if you draw certain cards and they're not the cards you want, you can later burn them and draw other cards. But this is where the tactical choices of the game come in, in that your life, the life of your hunter, is tied to that deck. When you take damage, you need to discard cards, either known or possibly unknown cards. So there's this duality back and forth of, at the beginning of the game, you're at your strongest, and that, that level is different depending on certain items and depending on the limitations of the hunter. But as the game progresses, not only are you utilizing your cards for specific actions, um, attacks or special powers, but at the same time, you're taking damage. Now, ideally, we're going to do our best not to take damage, but there is always that possibility. And at some points, in order to gain glory or to prevent one of the machines from escaping to get that trophy, you have to give and have a little bit of take back and forth. So we need to be careful of always having a little bit of a, a cushion not to burn through the cards. So I, I find that part of the game very, very intriguing because it caters to two play styles. If you're someone like me that is all about literally the tabletop glory, I mean, I, I want to win and it's a co-op and I'm going to work with my players, work with the other team members, work with my friends, get into that social. I appreciate the focus of the game from that perspective. But if it's a chance to gain glory, tabletop immortality, I'm, I'm going to take it. So I'm willing to gamble. I'm willing to push my luck. I'm willing to say, if I expend this attack, destroy these components, pull it off, I'm going to win. If I don't, I'm going to be in a lot of trouble. That, that's my personal threshold. But at the same time, the game can also accommodate players who have a more Eurocentric view in that they want to play conservative. They want to optimize. They want to have the best hand possible. There are strengths and weaknesses to playing both ways. But from this perspective, understanding that, that core mechanic, the engine that drives the game, preventing damage is key. Um, in terms of you complete a hunt, you've got some salvage, you've got some machine parts, you've got some components, you go to the trader, and you can buy new items, you can get new cards, you can upgrade various weaves, armor, equipment, weapons. The focus that I like to start with is armor, absolutely damage reduction. Now, it is a, a somewhat random draw in terms of cards from the merchant. Some are stacked more than others, and there's a chance that you will get more than others, which reflects their inventory. So yes, we are at the control of, of that. And of course, depending on the level of the hunt, one, two, or three, other options open up. But within that random that we can control, the reason why I say go for damage reduction possibilities first is twofold. When you take damage, it is a fixed amount. So when you attack one of the machines, you're rolling the dice. How many hits did you get? How many criticals or special activations? We look at the cards. Does it convert to uh, shock? Does it convert to fire? Does it convert to additional damage? Does it allow you to trigger something? That, that's the puzzle mechanic you can work out. And while it is based on the dice, of course, different dice have a different output, there are ways to influence the dice based on upgrades and based on certain weapons that will give you a larger dice pool. But that's random. The one thing that I can count on getting hit every single turn is the amount of damage that I'm going to take from that machine, whether it's ranged or whether it's close. So it's going to be fixed. I know tactically if I make a mistake or if I gamble a little bit, this is the, the damage threshold that I'm going to receive. From there, now I roll dice to see how much is fill in the narrative. Blocked, absorbed, taken. The dice there, of course, again, can be controlled randomly, depending on the armor. Does it roll a blue? Does it roll um, an orange die? But having a weave or having some sort of damage reduction that even before you roll the dice or, or say after you roll the dice 
reduce by X amount, reduce by one, or reduce by this condition, or reduce by um, certain attributes on there. That is huge. That is huge because that helps control the swinginess of the dice. Simply put, this is important because when I take damage, again, I need to discard cards from my hand. That is a twofold effect. The twofold effect is, first of all, I'm literally losing cards. So that's less options that I can potentially do either this turn or in future turns. And at the same time, I'm getting closer and closer to that threshold of gassing out, passing out, and losing my life and not having any hands back. And in terms of the cards that uh, we can lose, you can customize your deck. This goes into the deck building. Most of the cards for all of the hunters are going to be attack-based cards or, or special attack-based cards. I won't say you're ever going to run out of them. I mean, there have been one or two times that I've been playing where there's been less attacks in my hand and more in the deck. So maybe I want to... Um, redraw or, or burn a few from that perspective. But generally speaking, you have more attack possibilities. I mean, it is a hunt-based game than special card type abilities. And I'm not going to give away any of the spoilers. We will dive into the specific hunter classes and talk about that. But you can essentially attack or do this. And, and this could be an ability, uh, could be an interrupt, could be a chance to target a component, could be a chance to gain additional glory. Those cards give you a significant advantage. So if I can negate damage from my hand with an upgrade, so I take a hit, I take four points from a grazer, um, I roll the die, I reduce it by two, I've got two left, I reduce it by one more because you subtract it because of that item upgrade, I take one damage, that is is controlling it. So I find for that duality, I really, really want to make armor my first priority. Even if I'm a ranged hunter, even if I'm at that point where I'd rather be more ranged than up close, stuff happens. And of course, there is ranged attacks in the game. And some of the machines will attack ranged in the game. Damage reduction, preserve your cards. And then from there, keeping an eye on upgrading weapons and upgrading abilities to output the damage 